Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eva and I love all things skincare and makeup, both high-end luxury as well as low-end and budget makeup. If you like any of those categories, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I am a brand new channel here on YouTube and it really helps me show up more for others to be able to view my videos. Now, I do have to preface this video by saying I am feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, think I'm catching a little bit of a bug, so if I seem low energy, that is why. I am doing my best to chug my Gatorade Zero throughout this video to keep the energy up, but did want to provide that little preface. I am very excited because today we are talking about one of my favorite sales of the year, and that is the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty event. For those of you who aren't familiar, Ulta does these several times throughout the year and they're usually themed. So they'll do like a 21 days of hair, a 21 days of skincare, and then the 21 days of beauty, which starts on March 12th, which will either be tomorrow or today, depending on how fast I get this video up. But the 21 days of beauty is great because it's both skincare as well as makeup. Each day there will be a set list of products that will be 50% off for that day only. The reason why I really love this sale is because it's a great way to stock up on tried and true favorites and also it's a great way to test products that you've kind of been on the fence about or been curious about and just didn't want to pay full price. The way I'm going to break up this video is I'm going to do this video on the first week of the sale and then during this next week, I'm gonna post it for the following week, etc. The reason why I'm breaking it down into separate videos is because I actually own a lot of these products. I am a makeup hoarder, and this is basically my Olympics. This is my time to shine. I can provide swatches, in-depth reviews on the products that I'm going to recommend. And rather than sit through an hour and a half video, I wanna actually break it up week by week. I'm going to go into each day of the sale for the first week and I'm going to talk about the products that I want to recommend or products I'm thinking about purchasing. I'm not going to comment on every single product. I'm only really going to mention ones that either I am going to purchase, am interested in purchased, purchasing, or ones that I'm going to recommend. So kicking off on March 12th, the first product I want to talk about is the Tarte Man Eater Mascara. Now, this product, I tried it when it originally came out and then kind of forgot about it. I did remember liking it, but I don't really remember much about it. And that's because I cycle through so many mascaras. I am a longtime BoxyCharm subscriber. I feel like I'm always getting mascaras included in that subscription box. And then in general, I just can't help myself. I pick up so many mascaras to test out. I did go through my drawer and find this Maneater Mascara. Now it was in its box, so it's brand new. I haven't opened it, exposed it to air. So even though it's a little bit older, I think because it hasn't been opened until when I open it in a few minutes here, it should be okay. What I wanna do is I thought it would kind of be fun to actually try this mascara on so you can see in real time what it looks like and get my reactions. Throughout this video, I am going to be doing a mix of talking about products that I already put on my face, live applications, and then I also took a ton of swatch videos that I will be inserting throughout. So without further ado, let's go ahead and try on this mascara. As far as price point, it is going to be on sale for $12.50. So it is the price of, honestly, cheaper than a drugstore mascara. I feel like a lot of them are getting up there to the $15 range. So this is a pretty good deal. Now, as far as the brush goes, it is one of those, hopefully you can see here, one of those rubber brush heads where the brush heads are really short. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. We'll apply it to my right eye first. We'll zoom in and we can see what the difference is and then we'll apply it to my other eye. Okay, the mascara has been applied. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you in so we can take a look at the two eyes. Okay, we're in pretty close. Now, as you can see, it did a decent job of lifting my lashes. 
I will say that I did have to apply more coats than I would like. I want to say I applied maybe like three or four, three or four coats of mascara as opposed to when I use like my tried and true now discontinued Marc Jacobs mascara, I only have to apply one to two coats to get that lifted look. So I would say it looks nice. If you need a new mascara and you're trying to spend under $15, I would recommend it, but it's nothing that I'm going to say you need to replace an existing mascara with. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the other eye and then we will come back and talk about the next deal for March 12th. Okay, we are back after having applied the mascara to both eyes. Moving right along to the next deal. The next one is one I feel so passionate about. Like, I wasn't sure if I was going to film this video, but then this deal and then two and two other ones, I was like, I have to film this video because I need people to understand why they need these products in their life. So the next deal we're gonna be discussing are the MAC paint pots. Just to prove how much I love MAC paint pots, this is how many I own. I own several of them. And now I'm gonna explain a little bit more about what the MAC paint pot is, if you've been living under a rock and I've never heard of it, and then go through the shades and why I like them. So the MAC paint pot normally retails for $24. They are gonna be on sale for $12.50 on March 12th only. And the MAC Paint Pot is essentially a cream, a potted cream eyeshadow. They originally only came out in matte colors, but two-ish years ago, I wanna say, or maybe longer than that now, maybe three, three years ago, they did expand the line and included more colorways and then also shimmers, which I'll get to in a little bit. I am going to go ahead and insert swatches. I did swatch my entire collection of MAC paint pots. We will be here all day if I go through every single one, but I wanna highlight a few of my favorites from the MAC collection and then get into the shimmer ones. So my number one recommendation is the shade Painterly. I think the lighting here is making it look much lighter than it is, but it's essentially a very light nude. It basically matches my skin tone. It's a little bit darker right now because I am very pale, but it's wonderful for applying as a primer all over your lid to really cancel out any discoloration, veins, redness, dark spots, etc. These also can definitely be worn alone. They're very creamy. They're super blendable. Now, some of my other favorite shades in addition to Painterly are Groundwork is a great shade. This is another neutral shade and it's a little bit darker than Painterly. I wanna say it's like one shade darker. I also really like the shade Contemplative State. It is a mustard shade. So this is a really cool one to wear all over the eyes if you want Kind of like, I don't know, like a little bit more of like a grungier nude. And then my third favorite is really hard to pick, but I feel like my third favorite is probably Laying Low, which is yet another nude shade. Something else I want to mention about these products is they're very easy to revive. So Laying Low, you may have noticed, was starting to like lift in the corners, and that's because I've had these for a while. Confession, I don't believe in makeup expiration dates for the most part. So I keep products much longer than one is supposed to. But one of the great things about the paint pots is if you purchase Duraline, which is a product you can get from like Beautylish. There are also a few other retailers who make a similar product. Um, I think Inglot makes one as well. I'll go ahead and link below in the description. But if you utilize one of those, you can just add that in and then mix it around a little bit and it will rehydrate the product and make it creamy again. Now I mentioned that they came out with shimmer shades. I was really excited for the shimmer shades, but when I purchased them, I was like pretty disappointed. If I recall correctly, I think I purchased four and then tried two and then left the other two unopened and like returned them to the store. So I will go over those. One of them, I'm excited to give another chance though, and I'll explain why. 
So the first one I have is the shade Babe in Charms. It's just very, very sheer. It doesn't provide much pigment or much sparkle at all. So I would not recommend the shimmer one. However, I did pick up Silver Screen. And the first time I tried it, I think I was just expecting it to be way more pigmented. But this came back on my radar because um, Phoebe Bridgers, who's a musician, who's like one of my absolute favorite female musicians, won the Women of the Year Award through Time Magazine. And her makeup artist actually used this on her eyes as part of her look. And I'll actually insert the photo of that makeup look and I'll link her makeup artist's Instagram down below. So this was what she used um, in conjunction with some other things on Phoebe's eye. And I want to give this one another shot. So this one I did use and really write off because it was pretty sheer. But after seeing the beautiful look that was created on Phoebe Bridgers, I am going to give this one another chance. As far as deals I'm thinking about purchasing on the 12th, I am thinking of picking up the Zit Sticka SPF. I've heard good things about it. I really wanna try it. I just really need to pause and look at the expiration dates of all the sunscreens I've been hoarding um, because sunscreen is one of the products where I ride or die by the expiration date. So I wanna make sure I'm not buying yet another sunscreen that I won't be able to use before it expires. But if you are in the market for a new sunscreen, I have heard very good things about that Zit Sticka sunscreen. Okay, moving on to March 13th. The only deal on March 13th that I'm intrigued by are the Urban Decay Vice Hydrating Lipsticks. I could have sworn I had some, but I have searched high and low and I cannot find them. I think I maybe have two and I remember really liking them, but I cannot find them for the life of me. Um, so I don't have them actually to demonstrate, but from what I recall, they were a very hydrating, like illuminating lip product. They are not transfer proof. They're definitely going to be a product that I would recommend, you know, don't pick up like a very dark shade because it could get to the outer outer parts of your lips. I could also be completely making this up, but I do know that I have swatched them in store and thought they were really lovely. So if you are interested in picking up a hydrating lipstick, they are going to be only 1050. The next deal I'm super excited about is on March 14th, and these are the Nude Sticks Blush Bronzer Highlighter Sticks. Now I've been using these for a really long time. I feel like Nude Sticks was one of the original brands to popularize the cream stick blush highlight bronzer product before anyone else did. So I own a lot of these. I'm looking over here at my notes to make sure I'm getting this right, but Nude Sticks markets them or yeah, markets them and then they're categorized on the Ulta website as Bronze and Glow, Bloom and Matte Lux. So I'm gonna go through each of those four different formulations and talk through them and share my favorite shades. Of the Nude Sticks highlighters, I own three shades. I own Illuminati, Bubbly Baby, and then Ice Ice Baby. If you're unfamiliar with Nude Sticks and how their products work, you have product on one end and the other end you have a brush. Now, do I ever use these brushes? No, but could I see them being useful? if I was ever traveling and forgot my brush. Yes, so it's not a complete throwaway product, but I just personally haven't ever used the end brush. As far as favorite shades go for the highlighters, I am gonna insert swatches. Two of the shades are very, very similar. So Ice Ice Baby and Illuminati are virtually identical. They're pretty much the same. Um, I like Illuminati slightly more because I do feel like it is a little bit more illuminating than Ice Ice Baby. Ice Ice Baby has a slightly little bit of micro glitter. So I would recommend Illuminati over Ice Ice Baby. But I'm also going to be a bad influence and recommend 
bubbly baby or bubbly baby. I was surprised by how much I love this. I thought it would be too dark on me, but it actually turns into a beautiful champagne. It's still, of course, like, you know, it, it is darker than my skin tone, but it's a beautiful one to wear in the summer months when I do have a little bit more of a bronze or I've been making more of an effort to use my face tanning drops, etc. So of the highlighter ones, ones I would recommend Illuminati or Bubbly Bebe. Next, let's chat their bronzing sticks. So I have two shades. I have Bondi Bay and I have Beach Babe. Bondi Bay is the bronzer I am wearing today. It's a really nice neutral tan. It doesn't wear too orange on me. I will be inserting swatches to show you what the tone is on this product. Beach Babe, I love but it's very confusing as to why it's marketed as a bronzer because in my mind it is very clearly a blush. This is the shade of Beach Bay. It's a really, it's a really pretty like, honestly like a really pretty pink color and I really love this shade but absolutely not for bronzer. As far as which ones of these I would recommend, if you are in the need of a bronzing stick, I know bronzing sticks have become more and more popular because of TikTok. This is a really good one, Bondi Bay. And then as far as Beach Babe, I actually really like this one as a blush. So if you're in the market for a blush, recommend Beach Babe. In the market for a bronzer, Bondi Bay is great. Moving on to the nude sticks blush category. Now they break down their blushes into a couple different formulations. The first one we're going to be talking about is the Nudies Matte Luxe. Now, I don't quite understand why these are marketed as matte because they're definitely not matte. I guess they're slightly less dewy than the Nudies Bloom, but the marketing on these confused me a little bit. Even though they're not matte and they're a little bit mismarketed, I absolutely love these. My favorite shade of the bunch probably has to be nudie buff. I love a nude toned blush. I feel like it's just super flattering year round and this one's a great one. I do love so many of the shades. I own almost all of them. You'll be able to see them shortly in the swatch video. And it is hard to pick, but if I'm just gonna recommend one from the Matte Lux formula, definitely Nude Buff. I'm also not wearing blush yet because I did want to apply it on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the Nudies Matte Blush on camera so you can see. Now I like to apply my blush sticks directly to my cheeks. I know a lot of people apply them to the brush first, but I don't, I don't really see the reason for that. So I like to apply it directly to my cheeks and then just blend it out with a dampened beauty blender. They blend super easily. That took me maybe 30 seconds to blend them out. And this particular shade is a barely there shade. It's very natural, great for everyday use. So definitely big recommendation for the shade nude buff. The next formulation we are going to discuss is the Nudies Bloom. And when these came out, these were marketed as an all over dewy color. So they were marketed as being dewier and glowier than the matte line. I still find both of them are quite dewy and I love both formulations. So for me, it comes more down to which shades I prefer. I own six of the Nudies Bloom shades, so it is hard to pick because cream blushes are like my favorite blush category, but if I had to recommend two, I would recommend Rusty Rouge. And this is a beautiful rust color that is great for honestly fall especially, but another one that's great for year round. It's just a really, really beautiful, like rusty orange. The next shade I absolutely love is the shade Bohemian Rose. 
And this one is just a really pretty baby pink. Like it's it's pretty similar to I it's a little more bit more it's a little bit more mauve compared to like that bright pink Dior blush that everyone that that tonality that everyone is looking for right now. So it's a little bit mauvier, but it's really really beautiful. And my third favorite from the Nudies Bloom lineup is the shade Sweet Peach Peony. And it's just a really, really beautiful peach. So right here we have Peach Peony, we have that Rust shade in the middle, and then at the end we have that Bohemian shade. I realized I never mentioned the price point. So these are normally $34, but they are $17.50 each. So a really great price. Um, honestly, similar to drugstore blush prices these days. Now, March 15th, the full size Lorac palettes are going to be 50% off. I will be picking up that Fairy Tale Forest one. I missed out on it last year during the sale. I forgot about it. And it's a palette that I know Lauren May Beauty here on YouTube really loves. She's one of my favorite content creators. The palette I do have is the Marikai palette. This one is a little bit of their pricier one. So it's normally $50. So it will be $25 during the sale. You can see it has a nice mix of cool tones and then a few warm tones. I actually am wearing it on my eyes today. I do like this palette. I will say I don't like those first two rows. I didn't find these shades to be super pigmented, which is okay, but these shimmers, I, I just did not like the second row of shimmers. However, these mattes were absolutely beautiful. And then these shimmers down here, they're basically foil shadows and they wear really really beautifully you can kind of layer them on the eye without them caking up too much so overall would i recommend this palette for 25 dollars yes but i would say if you're in the market for a palette i would probably get either the soleil the noir or the forest fairy tale palette because based on the swatches i've seen those palettes are much more consistent throughout the entire palette as opposed to paying for a palette that kind of has two dud row shades. On March 16th, the deal that I'm going to be recommending are the About Face Lip Pencils. These are excellent and they will be $6. Now I have a few shades, I could not find them. I have the shade Cradled and then I have this shade here, which is the shade False Alarm. And these are super, super creamy and very pigmented. I'm actually not wearing a product on my lips right now because I wanted to go ahead and try this on camera for you. This is a kind of like a rosy nude shade. It doesn't tug at all, which is my favorite type of lip liner. And it's really, really creamy, so creamy that I'm probably gonna put it all over my lips. So this is the look with the lip liner in the shade False Alarm. Now these always sell out really quickly. So if you are interested, honestly, have it in your cart and then when 10 p.m. Pacific time hits, go ahead and check out. Um, Ulta is based in the Midwest, so their deals, like the 21 Days of Beauty, always start at 10 p.m. Pacific time, or at least they have in the past. So that's my tip for getting the shades you want in a product like this. March 17th, we have a great highlighter going on sale and it is the Ofra highlighters. I used to have several, but I recently decluttered some because a few of them were just too dark on my skin tone. I kind of am kicking myself because I wish I had them for swatch purposes, but if I did that, I would never have room for new makeup. The two shades I do still have are the Highlighter Glazed Donut shade, which is a collab with Nikki Tutorials, and the Start Inspired Highlighter, which is a collab with the creator, Samantha March. Now, the Nikki Tutorials Donut one, it's just a beautiful blinding highlighter. These, you'll see in the swatches, these look wet upon application. Like, they do not look like they are powder whatsoever. The Samantha March one I like because it is two-toned, so you can either 
pick one of the tones and wear it, or I like to wear it mixed together. These are going to be on sale for $17.50. Highly recommend picking them up. They are a beautiful product. I'm not wearing a highlighter right now because I did want to go ahead and demo one of these on camera. So I'm going in with the Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum 08 brush. I think this is a highlighter brush. I'm not quite sure. And I am just picking up some of that Glazed Donut Nikki Tutorials highlight and applying it right to the cheekbone. And sorry for the car alarm that was just going off. Really, really beautiful. You may notice the lighting's a little different and that is because my ring light died and I'm charging it, but I wanna push through and finish this video because as I mentioned earlier, I'm not feeling well and I'm feeling progressively worse. But what I did is I did apply the Nikki Tutorials highlighter in the shade Glazed Donut. Really, really beautiful. You can see it's very illuminating and yeah, I highly recommend it, especially because it's $17.50. Okay, March 18th, I think is perhaps gonna go down as the most exciting day of the year. And that is because two beloved products are going on sale. The first one, it's a very quick overview. I'm looking for it on my desk. Here we go. It is the original Beauty Blender. Now, I know there are a lot of dupes out there, a lot of other beauty sponges, but in my opinion, nothing, nothing comes close to the OG Beauty Blender. I don't know what it is. Obviously, it's proprietary, but something about the way it holds, like the right amount of moisture, the bounce, the thickness, etc. There's just nothing like the original Beauty Blender. Now, do I think it's worth $20? No, but for $10, I would recommend if you have not yet tried one of the OG Beauty Blenders, picking these up. I will probably pick up a couple more just because I really do love them, even though I also like the Sonia Kashuk ones, I like the Real Techniques ones, but I still think you can't beat the original Beauty Blender. For the item I am most excited about, it is the Benefit blushes. Now Benefit redid their lineup of blushes this past spring and I own like seven of them. I was counting. I'm ashamed to say but I love these blushes. First things first, something I love that they did is they got rid of the stupid brush that came in the compact which means the compacts are smaller and much easier to store. I have one of the OG blushes. This is in the shade Hervana. I really love this particular shade, so I won't be giving up on it quite yet. Um, I am holding on to it even though it's pretty old, but when you compare the packaging, you can see on a side-by-side, -side, it's slimmer. So it's gonna take up less room, much easier to pack, much easier to store. So that's something I'm excited about. As far as which shades to get, this one's really hard because I love so many of these shades. I'm gonna try to narrow it down maybe to my top four or five shades, but it's going to be difficult. So you're really gonna have to make the decision based on your skin tone, what's missing in your collection, what types of blush shades you gravitate towards to decide for yourself which ones you're gonna pick up, if you're gonna pick up any at all. One of my favorites is the shade Starla. Starla is a beautiful bronzy brown blush shade that is just so flattering. I love a bronzy, brownie, taupey blush shade. The next shade I really love is the shade Willa. Willa is a really beautiful, like pinky, kind of lavendery shade. You'll see in the swatches just how beautiful it is. The next shade I really love is the shade Peachin. The shade is just really, really pretty. It's like a nudie peach, really beautiful. It's illuminating. I also really love the shade Shelly. Shelly is just a very cute, true peachy shade. I also love the shade Moon. Moon is a really pretty deep berry shade. If you are fair like me, you will want to apply this with a light hand. The shade Butterfly kind of scared me at first, 
but Alana Davidson I know went on the brand trip for this particular launch and she used this as an eyeshadow and on the cheeks as a monochromatic look and that's what really drew me in. And then the other shade that I love is the shade Palm. It's a little bit daunting in the pan but it is actually very beautiful. It's very buildable. It's a true kind of like pomegranate rusty shade, but that's a really great one as well. Jumping in really quick on audio because I forgot about another shade that I love, which is Sunny. It is a true coral peachy shade. I didn't do a good job of helping narrow them down because I really do love all the shades. So maybe I can talk about which shades I think are the most unique. I would say the first one would be Starla. I think this is a really pretty unique brown blush. The other shade I would say that is unique is this Willa shade. It's kind of lavenderish, pinkish. And then the third shade, oh, that's tough. I do feel like the palm shade, which again, I don't have in front of me right now, is really beautiful. It's a very wearable pomegranate, kind of a deeper rusty shade that normally fair skin tones can't pull off, but because it is buildable, it is one that is pretty universally flattering in my opinion. That wraps it up for week one of Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Let me know in the comments below what you're getting. Let me know if you have any other questions I can answer for you. I hope to get my other video up midweek or maybe towards the end of this next week for the following week's deals and would love for you to subscribe, like, and comment down below. Let me know what you're getting or what you would recommend I get for products that maybe I didn't mention. Thanks so much and I hope you have a great rest of your day.